Welcome to the first adequate boss guide for the Sunwall Plateau. In this video, we'll be going over Caligos, who's the first boss in the raid. This is a two-phase encounter that requires coordinated movement on both your part and the raid. The raid is split into an up phase and a down phase, where both groups will be working on a different part of the boss. Best composition for this fight is two to three tanks with at least one prop paladin, six to eight healers with at least one holy paladin, and three to four classes that can decurse. You can have a solid mix of DPS, but make sure you bring along appropriate debuffs to make this encounter easier. If you are struggling on this boss, remember that a caster stack composition is easier than a melee stack. For the pull, you want to have a hunter auto shot feign death while the rest of your raid is far back in the gazebo. You can then mount up and start in your original positions. On pull, all raid members should be spread out 8 yards. Have an MD ready for your paladin tank, and you will pull the boss into position where you can then start DPSing. Remember that this is a dragon, so don't be in front or behind it, and make sure to keep the tank dispelled at all times from the frost breath. You want to save all your CDs for the down phase, so don't pop them on pull. There are several abilities in this fight, but the major ones you need to worry about are as follows. Wild Magic is cast throughout the fight. Using a weak aura or a boss atom will let you know which, which Wild Magic is starting. The only one that you really need to be careful of is Black Wild Magic, which increases the threat generated by 100%. Arcane Buffet. This is a stacking arcane debuff. They can be removed by Divine Shield, Ice Block, and Cloak of Shadows. The debuff is also removed when you head down to the Spectral Realm. If you're getting too high on stacks, use a Hellstone or an Immunity to help your healers. Boundless Agony is a curse that starts in the Spectral Realm and bounces to another player once it's decursed. It does increase damage the longer it's on a player. If you want to decurse at half duration, which is approximately 10 to 15 seconds, and there's a weak or in the description video, to help you track the right time to decurse. If you're instantly decursing, it's not going to do any good. This will eventually be brought up to the top. We have to keep monitoring it for the duration of the fight. Spectral Blast is the main mechanic of this fight, and it will target a random raid member and deal 5k AoE damage to everyone around them within 8 yards. This also teleports a targeted player to the Spectral Realm and creates a portal where they are standing. You want to be positioned with your group so that the portal is easily accessible. The portal's only up for 10 seconds and has a GCD, so you can optimally only get 10 people down. Quickly move to the portal and click on it if you're assigned. This is the major mechanic of the fight, and you need to split your raid into three groups. There are four group strats, but my guild will personally be using a three group strat for progression. This mechanic is easy once it's understood, so there's no reason to overcomplicate it. Once you take the portal down, you'll be in the Shadow Realm for 60 seconds, and come up with a debuff that prevents you from going down again for 60 seconds. You have all your DPS and healers assigned to three different groups, which will have about seven to eight players, five DPS and two healers. Try to stagger the healers going down with one healer going in first and the second healer going around five to six seconds later. Tanks will follow a different assignment. <clears throat> you need to send a tank down on the first portal and the third portal. In the Spectral Realm, don't immediately taunt Sathavar. Wait for a healer and some DPS to get down there before you pull the ad off of Kalik. There is no real danger of him dying, so don't rush it. The Paladin will bubble off his stacks when they get too high up top, then you continue to tank Caligos until the first tank comes back up. When the first tank comes back up, the Paladin will take the next portal down, and the tanks will continue to swap when their debuffs drop. Be vocal about what you're going to do whenever you have a tank swap. Each group should have one decurs. When one player in your group goes down, the rest of the players in that party follow along with assigned healers and tanks. If you are running seven healers, then you should try to keep the Holy Paladin up at all times and have him bubble off the stacks of the Arcane Buffet. I recommend setting down two healers at all times and having everyone in the down phase stack around Sathavar to maximize chain heals. Each group should have five DPS and two heals with a space for the tank to get in. If you don't get in with your group, it's not the end of the world. Just wait for the next portal and go down then. Pop CDs and Lust when you get down, and wait for everyone in your group to be there before you Lust. Once you leave the Spectral Realm, you have a debuff called Spectral Exhaustion. This will prevent you from going down for another 60 seconds. At this point, you'll follow the same group rotation that you went down in the first time. For example, groups 1, 2, 3. You want to either go back to your original positions, or stack in the middle until you have 10 seconds left on Spectral Exhaustion. This is up to your Raid Leader. There are some special scenarios with this, which may help save a wipe if you're aware of them. If 
the tank gets ported down, you need to communicate which group is gonna go down. You can pre-assign a group to a tank, so say tank A goes down, then group A goes with them. You'll have two healers and the DPS assigned to them. If the Paladin tank gets ported, then the tank that was assigned to go down on the third portal should tank the boss or your next beefiest tank. If the Holy Paladin goes down, you have to make a quick call for a group to go down, and one of the healers from that group should stay up. This is the worst case scenario, but it is manageable. The healer that stayed up will just go down on the next portal and continue to overheal the tank for the duration. Caligos does have an enrage, and when Sathafar or Caligos get to 10%, both will enrage and increase their damage output. You want to communicate the boss health between both realms and ensure you don't push either one to 10% before you're ready to burn. The encounter ends when both mobs are banished to 1%, and you need both mobs to be banished to end the encounter. Good luck, and I hope you have an adequate kill.